Sheila Kalhatkar, Black Edge, Inside Information, Dirty Money, and the Quest to Bring Down the Most Wanted Man on Wall Street. Dive into the thrilling world of Wall Street, Dirty Money, and Federal Investigations with Black Edge, Inside Information, Dirty Money, and the Quest to Bring Down the Most Wanted Man on Wall Street by Sheila Kalhatkar. The book uncovers the rise of Steve Cohen, a Wall Street presenter, and his controversial dealings as he forms SAC Capital Advisors, an investment firm. The firm's success attracts government suspicion, leading to investigative attempts to gather evidence of insider trading involving Cohen. As you explore this intriguing narrative, discover how Cohen's wealth was amassed, learn about the corrupt practices rampant within the financial industry, and witness the efforts by federal agents to bring the culprits to justice. Unraveling Steve Cohen's Secrets As the curtains fell on Wall Street mogul Raj Rajaratnam in 2008, he was merely the tip of the iceberg. Authorities stumbled upon another high-profile name, Steve Cohen, triggering a deep dive into the life of the once middle-class boy from Long Island who conveniently found himself tangled in shady financial dealings. In 2008, when the U.S. was engulfed in a financial crisis, Raj Rajaratnam, a Wall Street heavyweight, was apprehended for utilizing insider information for trades, amassing a fortune in the process. As federal agents began connecting the dots, they stumbled upon a recurring name, Steve Cohen. This puzzle prompted the question, was there a more significant financial scandal lurking behind the scenes? Rajaratnam's arrest proved to be just the beginning. Tracing back the history of Steve Cohen reveals his humble beginnings in a middle-class family on Long Island, New York, before setting foot on a financial path. Cohen's early years at the renowned Wharton School at the University of Philadelphia fostered an obsession with the finance world, including devouring the Wall Street Journal and closely monitoring the stock market. As a natural at poker, he outplayed peers to earn considerable sums. Upon graduating from Wharton in 1978, Cohen entered the workforce as a 21-year-old at Gruntle & Company, a New York-based brokerage firm, where his prowess quickly surfaced. Early successes included turning a $4,000 profit in a single afternoon, an impressive feat in 1978. Cohen's wealth grew exponentially, reaching as high as $10 million annually. However, it wasn't long before suspicions of foul play arose, with Cohen facing insider trading allegations. In 1985, the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, investigated his investments following a suspected leak. A friend had tipped Cohen off about an impending takeover of electronics firm RCA by General Electric. Cohen invested heavily in RCA, accumulating $20 million after the announcement. Although the criminal case against Cohen eventually dissipated, it shed light on his potentially unscrupulous trading strategies. Wall Street's Rise of SAC Capital In just 14 years, Cohen went from a junior trader to a Wall Street powerhouse, culminating in the creation of his own investment firm, SAC Capital Advisors. The hedge fund, founded in 1992, found immense success by leveraging Cohen's skill in predicting short-term stock movements. Quick to evolve, Cohen sensed a downturn in trading profits and shifted focus to hiring traders with a fundamental edge, ones with industry-specific expertise or connections. Sachs' pursuit of insider intelligence and relentless drive for growth propelled the hedge fund to impressive heights, surpassing $1 billion in assets by 1999. Secrets Behind Sachs' Big Profits In the mid-2000s, Cohen was one of the wealthiest men globally, amassing a personal fortune of almost $10 billion. However, suspicions surrounding the operations of SAC Capital led to allegations of stock price manipulation filed by Canadian firms BioVale and Fairfax. Sachs' strategy focused on betting on short-term stock price changes related to specific events and using expert networks to gather valuable insider information, ultimately making huge profits and catching the attention of regulators. During the mid-2000s, Cohen rose to the ranks of the world's richest individuals with a staggering personal wealth of $10 billion. His, and SAC Capital's seemingly impossible success, however, 
didn't go unnoticed, and doubts about the legitimacy of their incredible profits soon emerged. In 2006, two Canadian companies, drug manufacturer BioVail and insurance firm Fairfax, accused SAC Capital of manipulating their stock prices. They claimed SAC Capital spread negative and fabricated reports about their businesses, resulting in plunging stock prices. As a consequence, SAC traders gained huge profits by betting against these companies. Oddly, Fairfax employees reported receiving eerie nighttime calls from anonymous individuals hinting at their company's alleged fraudulent behavior. Mysterious websites further fueled these allegations, drawing comparisons between Fairfax and the infamous Enron scandal. Although these claims lack substantial evidence, they caught the attention of regulators such as the SEC and the FBI. Meanwhile, SAC Capital sustained its questionable culture of gathering inside information. The firm's approach relied on short-term stock price fluctuations, often influenced by specific events like company profit announcements. SAC managers encouraged traders to leverage their contacts and acquire relevant information before any public announcements. One popular method of obtaining critical insights involved using expert networks, such as Gerson Lehrman Group. These networks connected investors with company executives, allowing consultations where executives were technically barred from disclosing inside information. However, in many instances, they subtly dropped valuable hints. SAC traders ensured that this information was put to good use, resulting in enormous profits built on murky foundations. The Boppy Insider Trading Scheme In the United States, nearly 5 million individuals suffer from Alzheimer's disease, and the search for an effective treatment is still ongoing. The lure of enormous profits has drawn interest from Wall Street, as evident from a case involving pharmaceutical companies Elon and Wyeth in the 2000s. Developing a new drug, bapinizumab, Bapi, they caught the attention of SAC trader Matthew Martoma. He swiftly built a relationship with Dr. Sidney, Sid, Gilman, who had insider knowledge about Bapi's development. Despite confidentiality agreements, Martoma managed to persuade Gilman to share confidential information about Bapi's trial results. Martoma utilized this knowledge to accumulate over $700 million in Elon and Wyeth stocks, believing that Bapi would be successful. However, upon discovering that Bapi was ineffective for most patients, Martoma and his partner, Cohen, decided to discreetly sell their stocks and capitalize on the declining share prices. Eventually, their strategy netted them a profit of $276 million as Elon and Wyeth stock prices plummeted following the official announcement of the Bapi trial results. Unraveling a Hedge Fund Giant Notorious for its insider trading practices, SAC Capital remained unchecked in the Wall Street scene during the late 2000s, thanks to the lack of regulatory oversight on hedge funds. However, by 2009, the FBI began secretly investigating SAC's opaque business operations, with the primary focus being its founder, Stephen Cohen. Employing a top-down strategy, the FBI aimed to gather evidence on Cohen by targeting junior SAC analysts and working their way up the chain of command. Their first break came from Jonathan Hollander, an ex-SAC analyst involved in an illicit Albertson stock trade. However, Cohen had an indirect trading method in place to protect himself from accusations, making it harder for the FBI to pin down his involvement. Simultaneously, the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, investigated Sachs' suspicious trading in Elon and Wyeth stocks ahead of a significant announcement. Unfortunately, the expose by the Wall Street Journal on November 19, 2010, alerted traders to the investigation, leading to the destruction of potential evidence as they scrambled to erase their traces. The Takedown of Insider Trading When the Wall Street Journal exposed the FBI and SEC's ongoing investigation, they had no choice but to act quickly to preserve insider trading evidence. In May 2011, they identified Matthew Martoma and Dr. Sidney Gilman as potential suspects. Phone records linked Martoma to Gilman, and further evidence showed that he had contacted Cohen before selling off Elon and Wyeth shares. Surprisingly, they discovered Martoma's real name was Ajay Thomas and that he had a troubled past, including having to leave Harvard Law School abruptly. 
To catch their ultimate target, Cohen, the FBI needed Martoma and Gilman's cooperation to gather the evidence they needed. Unraveling Martoma's Insider Trading In 2011, FBI agents approached Matthew Martoma with suspicions of insider trading but had no concrete evidence against him. However, by 2012, they were able to arrest him after Dr. Sidney Gilman, who had initially denied any involvement, confessed to providing Martoma with inside information about the Bopi drug trials. Despite Martoma's refusal to implicate Steve Cohen, the founder of his former firm, SAC, in the insider trading case, Cohen still felt the pressure and chose to settle with a record fine of over $600 million. Yet, the SEC remained determined to charge Cohen personally. When the FBI first paid a visit to Matthew Martoma in 2011, they suspected him of insider trading, but didn't have the evidence they needed to take action. The best they could do was ask him questions and try to break his composure. By 2012, though, circumstances had changed, and the FBI arrested Martoma without hesitation. The investigation initially hit a roadblock, as a key figure, Dr. Sidney Gilman, was evasive when questioned about his relationship with Martoma. While he could recall intricate scientific details about the drug trials, he was unable to provide any information regarding Martoma. On the other hand, Martoma cleverly chose to plead the Fifth Amendment to avoid self-incrimination, as he was facing a potential 10-year prison sentence. Martoma's refusal to implicate Steve Cohen, the founder of SAC, where he had once worked, left investigators puzzled. They wondered if Cohen was covering Martoma's legal fees or if Martoma was afraid of retribution from Cohen. In August 2012, a breakthrough occurred when Gilman finally agreed to cooperate and admitted to providing Martoma with confidential information about the Bopi clinical trials. This confession allowed the FBI to arrest Martoma. While Cohen and his firm, SAC, had avoided charges, he saw the looming danger and decided to settle the insider trading cases with a record payment of over $600 million. Cohen thought that the legal complications would disappear once he wrote that check. However, the SEC had not given up on their pursuit to charge Cohen himself. The Unsettling Insider's Game A new development emerged when the SEC obtained an email linking Cohen to another insider trading case involving Dell stocks at SAC. In July 2013, SAC agreed to a colossal settlement of $1.2 billion. The SEC's goal was to convict Cohen, but his lawyers cleverly argued that it couldn't be proven that he had acted on the email. The SEC dropped this inquiry and settled the main case for an additional $1.2 billion. Meanwhile, Matthew Martoma received a nine-year prison sentence but chose not to cooperate and testify against Cohen whose conviction remained elusive. Cohen rebranded SAC Capital Advisors as Point 72 Asset Management in 2014 and continues to amass wealth, earning $2.5 billion that year. The U.S. authorities' ongoing investigations have yielded no results, allowing Cohen to walk away as an incredibly wealthy man. In Black Edge, Sheila Kolhatkar offers a gripping insight into the morally ambiguous world of Wall Street, detailing how Steve Cohen rapidly rose through its ranks and amassed a fortune through SAC Capital Advisors. Although federal agents strove to gather sufficient evidence to incriminate Cohen in insider trading, they were ultimately unsuccessful. Despite SAC Capital Advisors being rebranded as Point 72 Asset Management to escape the scandal, Cohen remains an elusive figure, continually evading the law while expanding his wealth even further. This extraordinary account of Wall Street's darker side provides invaluable lessons for understanding the role of insider, trading in the modern financial landscape.